Hey guys, today I'm going to prove to you that the numbers that Wizard of Coast gives us, the customer base, the player base, are absolutely false. And they're trying to deceive advertisers and or partners that they are actually a bigger brand. Now, this has happened for many, many years. Mero was the first one to say that we had 20 million Magic players. And out of this 20 million Magic players, 40% of them were female. You don't need to play Magic very long to understand that, no, I don't think there's 20 million Magic players. And no, 40% of them are definitely not female. Now, you don't need much logic to understand that the overall peak was not 127, let's just call it 128,000 viewers. That's insane, and I can prove it. At no time was Magic the Gathering promoted on the front page of Twitch. If these viewers were real, and there's 125,000 plus of them, Magic of the Gathering would have been on the front page of Twitch. It never was. Very curious, right? Very curious indeed. Now, my second piece of evidence that I will present to you that these numbers are not real is based on the Mythic Championship 1, the Mythic Championship 2. And I have that data. So numbers don't lie. You don't need to be a genius to figure out that no, 125 people were not really watching. That was not the height. They're either using bots or using the Cursed Network. Kotaku wrote a very interesting article about how Wizard of the Coast is doing this and why they would want to do this. I think it is both embarrassing that we have to lie like this and very scummy. It is incredibly scummy that we have to do something like this to make up fake viewerships. And I have the evidence. And before they can delete the evidence or do something bad about it, I thought I would make a video and have a time capsule of the proof. And the proof is not... It's very logical what I'm going to present next. That being said, let's look at it. So the Mythic Championship number one had a prize pool of half a million dollars. It was held in Cleveland. And the total time watched was 767 hours. The average con concurrent viewership, which is the number that we had to look at, was 24,000. So let's look at that number, 24,000. That is the number that Twitch cares about. That is the number that Wizard of Coast should care about. It's at any given time, what is the average number of people watching? So it's not the peak. It is not the low. It is just the average. And that's the number that people get paid on sponsorships. That's the number that brands are, are, are worried about. So between Championship 1... Championship 1 had a lot of advertisement. It had a lot of fanfare. It had, the, I mean, they put hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars advertising the first championship. Now, as we will see from Championship 2, the average concurrent viewership declines quite drastically. So keep in mind, we're at 24,000 plus. Where do you think that we go on the Mythic Championship 2? Do you think we go up? Do you think we go down? Um, what do you think happens on championship number two? So I'm going to make a note, and the note says that number one, we had 24,000. That's the only number that you should really care about. The other numbers are not as relevant. The peak viewership is not as relevant. And the fact is, if you really did have 125,000 people, you would be on the front page of Twitch, and then you would get even more people. They're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars advertising to people who don't care. To be quite frank, they're probably advertising to female gamers. Like if I had to guess the demographic they're targeting it towards, because I never see an ad for Wizards of the Coast, wouldn't I be interested in the Mythic Championship? But I guess not. Okay, so the airtime was 32 hours. None of this really, and the total amount of views was half a million plus so let's keep that down so this is mythic championship number one 20,000 
24,000 and half a million. Okay, here we see something very strange happening. In London, we have Mythic Championship number two. The average concurrent viewership of Mythic Champion number two is down 15,000. So we went from 24,000 to 15,000. In case you are wondering, that's a massive, massive decline. That's not normal to go from 24 to 15. Maybe you didn't promote it correctly. Who really knows? But the total views actually went up. So our total views from the first Mythic Invitational was a little bit more than half a million. So how did our concurrent views go down by a massive amount? We're talking about, I'm gonna do some math, 15 over 24, divide by three, five, five eighths. We lost almost half our viewership. Yet our total views are up, double. Does anyone, can anyone tell me why that is the case? That's insane, right? Our, conc our average concurrent viewers went from 24,000 to 15,000, but our total views went up. That is what we call promotion. They were spending a ton of money promoting this event on the Curse Network as Kotaku wrote. Kotaku has a very interesting article on this. I, I trust that they have vetted their facts. So we're sending views, but people are not interested. People are just not interested in this product. The airtime is about the same. It's, you know, the same weekend. This is really bad. These numbers make no sense. We have dropped almost half our concurrent viewership, but we picked up double our total views on the same platform on Twitch TV. Something is very wrong, right? If we doubled our concurrent viewership, maybe then we would say, okay, now we're gonna double our total views because the ratio should be the same, but it's not. And in fact, it diverges even more. So this is the most recent Mythic Championship. We have almost 60,000 views. I'm just gonna round it up to 60,000. So we went from concurrent viewership and we have almost 3.3 .3 million. I'm just gonna round up to 3 point, yeah, 3.34 million. So we have quadrupled our concurrent viewership and tripled our total views. Are you effing kidding me? Think about this for a moment. Our first time we had 24,000, our first Mythic Championship. Then our second one, we went to 15,000. That makes sense because maybe we, you know, people are less interested. And then our next Mythic Championship has 60,000 almost. What the blank happened? Are you telling me between the Mythic Championship 1, which was two months ago, and uh, sorry, Mythic Championship 2 and Mythic Championship 3, we somehow gained four times the concurrent viewership and three times the views? And when you compare it to the Mythic Champion 1, where we had half a million views, we now have more than six times, six or seven times the views. Like you don't have to be a mathematician to know that these numbers make no sense at all unless there's advertising numbers included. How did we go from two to three, quadruple our concurrent viewership, triple our total views, and from one to three, we six to seven times X our total views? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. And let me tell you I, how I know this doesn't make any sense. And I can prove it to you in another screenshot which I'm ho that I took. These numbers, you would have, like, let's imagine we're a company. We're a baking company again. And we have 24,000 clients and we made half a million dollars. Okay, not bad. Then... We, in the next year, we had 15,000 clients, so we lost about half our clients. 
and somehow we made a million dollars. All right, that may be our clients just uh, bought more from us, right? But then in our next year, somehow we got 60,000 clients from 15, so we quadrupled our client base, and now we're selling $3.3 million, $3 million, $3.34 million of cakes. Nothing in the cake store has changed. The cake champion is still Autumn, who is a non-binary magic player. And she's our champion. I mean, there's no other way to put it. Um, and there's also Reed Duke. Thankfully, Reed Duke is here. Peace, brother Oaf, our internal wall friend. So let me, let me make this clear for you. Let's imagine we're a company, but instead of every year, every two months, this is our two-month cycle. We have 24,000 clients starting December. We open our shop in December. We have 24,000 clients. We make a half a million dollars of revenue. All right. Uh, four months later, we have 15,000 clients. So we lost 9,000 of our clients, but we make double our revenue. Kind of strange, but maybe there's wedding season. Maybe there are some factors that make sense here. But what does not make sense is two months after we quadruple our client base during the same period of time, and now we make 3.34 million. Because that's what sponsorships, that's what brands are looking at. They're viewing this from an economical standpoint. How many people watch total? How many people are actually interested? This is a scam. These numbers for any business, any organization makes no sense. Like, this is not how you grow. You don't grow and then go down and then grow like shoot up to the stars there's something that is very very wrong with these numbers are they inflated by advertising are they inflated by robots are they inflated by you know maybe social justice warriors who are now supporting the product when they don't buy the product i don't know what it is but i can tell you that if they truly had sixty thousand people watching at all times concurrent viewerships for, you know, Jessica, or there's a dude that's even worse than Saviz. His name is Christian Hawk. He literally doesn't even play magic. Like, he literally has not played magic ever. So it's kind of like, huh, interesting. My point is, these numbers are fake as F. Like, I can't even imagine why, why any organization would need to fake their numbers like this. Like clearly a sponsor is going to go over the numbers I looked at with you and say, hmm, something kind of smells wrong. How did we go from, it makes sense, our Mythic Invitation 1 should be our, like, we should have spent a lot of money marketing that, which they probably did. And then we go down to two because we didn't spend as much money. But how do we quadruple? How does a company quadruple itself in two months? We're not Facebook, we're not Google, we're not a tech stock or MTG Arena. Man, I, I don't know. What do you guys think? Leave me a comment below what you think the real number is and what you think they did. I have a very interesting conspiracy that they're inflating the numbers to promote themselves to Geico, kind of like League of Legends. They're not the only ones who have done this. They're not the only ones Kotaku has accused of inflating their numbers for sponsorship. But basically, no one, we don't even have Hot Pockets as a sponsor. Our Diet Mountain Dew. Our Doritos. Like, we literally have no sponsors in this space. Which is hilarious when you think about League of Legends. They got Geico and Papa John's. And, I mean, just look at their jerseys. They have, like, a million different sponsorships. Rocket Mortgage, which is QuickBooks. Intuit. Um... Toyota, I think Honda sponsors Team Liquid now. But why do we not have a single sponsor if our numbers are so good? Right? It's a mystery. Like, give me a break. Like, these brands are not idiots, right? That's why they haven't sponsored any of these pro, these pro players, quotation mark. Anyway, bye guys.